Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here on Gulfstream today in a not so nice <laughs> Friday as you can see the rain uh, showers behind us, but still uh, a lot of scratches. We are off the turf today and on the main track. Yes, well, it was bound to happen and there was a lot of rain in the forecast, but uh, the good news is it's going to be nice tomorrow. Yes. And tomorrow is the big day, so if you're going to have rain one of the two days, better to be on the Friday before the Sunshine Millions and Eclipse Awards tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we can be smart in the off the turf race. And I've said it before, and it's true. I think, you know, I keep blaming one of the reasons that I got buried up in Saratoga, the fact that it didn't rain all summer. Mm -hmm. Because I think this summer before, the only reason I didn't get buried was I won an off the turf days. And these are days where people misbet the races, mm -hmm. they bet the wrong horses, and you can find some value in your plays. You just have to do the work, and we'll be here to try to help you. We can try. We can definitely we try. And uh, as you d did mention there, uh, big day tomorrow as well. 12 races on tap. Just want to remind everybody that we do start early tomorrow at 12.05 first post for Sunshine Millions. And we continue the party on to the 45th annual Eclipse Awards. It's going to be a great day indeed. With that said, we're going to take a look at our featured wagers and our carryovers today. And in, in race one, we do have that rolling super high five, a carryover of $1,400 there in today's first race. That does start the 50 cent early pick five. And as we get into the sixth race on the card, it does start the 20 cent rainbow pick six, a carryover of $6,000. And race seven kicks off our late pick five. So obviously with uh, scratches pending as well, uh, we'll, we'll start off with race one here. And I know you do have a ticket. A couple of races in the sequence have been taken off the turf, inclu including Three. races two four and five. Yeah, three races are off the turf, but we're prepared for that. And we'll start out in the first race and we'll be discussing in a second. I'm going to use four, five, eight because for whatever reason, trainers scratch two horses. It'll be short prices. Rhythm Queen, Ladies Lunar Luck in the second race. Reckless Move looks like about one to five in the second race. By the time they run the race, I'll be singling her. Three horses in a tough third race, three in the fourth and two horses that are left. The fifth, we'll get to them. I'll tell you something. I thought the first race, this might be the race I'm the most excited about in the card. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, scratch the one casting count so far and uh, an interesting race indeed and uh, I kind of landed on the four Sweetwater in here for trainer Mark Cassie now last time out was heavily bet in the slop at Churchill going against Maiden $50,000 company I, I think this horse is definitely formful coming into the race he's, he's she's uh, run against some pretty legitimate horses in the past but you opt to try to chop go to the eight tail of Priscilla to the outside. Yeah, um, the feeling for me in this race is that Sweetwater could win, but horses that have lost consecutive races at odds on and maiden mm -hmm. claiming races, and they're going to be short prices again, are never going to be my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So that to me, as soon as I got to the first three horses, and obviously George Weaver's first or could be dangerous. He's a dangerous trainer. But I felt like this could be an interesting race because the four is a horse I'm going to bet against, win or lose. And the first horse you come to is Birdtastic, who got a real trip in her last start. I mean, she was sort of badly steadied coming out of the gate in there. She had some real trouble. She was badly steady, steady on the turn. She really didn't get the best of rides in that race, to be honest with you. And so she's a horse that immediately, dropping down for Nixito, has to be used by me, and she won't be much of a price. But the eight tail of Bracelli is a very, very interesting horse. Um, if this horse had just one, the one race, the first race, mm -hmm. I mean, I think she'd be about four to one in this race. And listen, her last race is a concern. She obviously was dreadful in there, and you don't know if she was ready to run her first start, and she just completely fell apart. But it was a mile, and I'm going to take a shot because her first race is a very curious race. I'm interested to see what Broadway Gal, who's Todd Pletcher first or Broker Maiden, does coming back allowance race because for see a Todd Pletcher first time starter win and get a 39 buyer is not something you expect from Todd. So what? And and Time Form US found the race to be very slow as well. Whether it was an issue with the race or something, or it was just a slow race. I know the only horse that's come out of it since then was a horse that had a bit of trouble in there and a horse trained by Jane Sibeli and came back with a very good second, improving her buyer figure 38 points. Tale of Priscilla had about as ridiculous a trip as you could possibly get. We're not going to show it, but got in trouble when a horse lost the rider at the start, broke slowly, was, was carried out badly, was badly fouled at different points in the race, and still ran this remarkable race. Now, there is the argument there's no trips in slow races, mm -hmm. but this horse ran too well in that race for me to completely dismiss it at what should be a big price. So you're thinking, well, in comparison of Taylor Priscilla's debut performance, she ran a 37 buyer speed figure. She's going to be facing horses who's, who've been running mid, low to mid to high 50 buyer speed figures. So do you think that that was a little bit of a, 
a curious first race, a little bit slower. She's going to improve 20 by her speed figures today. Oh, uh, she could improve 40. I wouldn't be shocked, to be honest with you. Her second race to concern, and that's something that I have cause for pause. But at a big price, I don't really care. Um, I think a number of things went on. I think it may be an aberrational race where the fig maybe just should be 20 points higher, but you can't make it higher mm -hmm. because it is what it is. It the is, time is what it is, race. and you can't just bump these up. But I also think that this horse had such significant trip that I don't think it's inconceivable to say this horse had six, seven lengths of trouble. If it had, let's say it had six lengths of trouble. Well, six lengths of trouble is a full second. It's 14 buyer points. Suddenly, you've got a 51, which I believe would be the second best buyer figure in this field behind the, f well, no, the, the third best, behind the two and four. Why can't that horse win this race off that? It's not as though it's meeting any tigers in here. Yeah, not at all. I, I kind of handicapped this race in terms of speed because I do think Sweetwater is going to be pretty forwardly placed and aggressively uh, ridden. We also have the two Lucian Lady who now draws the rail. She showed speed last time out on an off track. So uh, that, that's kind of the direction I went in here. But you do make a solid argument for the eight tail of Priscelli and uh, the five Birdtastic obviously coming out of a very troubled trip against Maiden Special. Yeah, and even though the four is projected to be the controlling speed I think a horse like the five Bertastic for Nick you never Zito. Know. The, Nick Nick knows the value of speed and this horse's first race is a complete throwout I won't be shocked at all when Bertastic's involved in the pace okay we'll move on to the second race on the card an open sixteen thousand dollar event and going on to the main track at the one turn mile sloppy sealed so far we have a couple of scratches in here so let's just talk about the seven <laughs> reckless move uh, you know uh, looking at this race off the turf I didn't mind it when it was originally off the turf. Now, with the scratch of the four and the six, who really figured in this race, it's hard to look past the seven. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There's really, after my soliloquy in the first race, I'll leave you with, I like Reckless Move at what should be a very, very short price. <laughs> <laughs> you could even look at the eight, though. Starship Gambler, this is a horse I used a, a little bit as well because she has uh, showed speed on the main track as well, but I think Reckless Move is going to be fast enough to keep up with her as well. So, not much to say about that race. We'll move on to the third, a maiden 12,500 event, and uh, six furlongs onto the main track. And go, Salvatore, go. Well, Javier Castellano back aboard here for Gustavo Delgado. And uh, I definitely think this horse figures, especially now coming back, uh, coming onto kind of a sloppy, sealed going. Uh, this horse has a lot of speed. Now, on the cutback, is he going to show that much speed at six furlongs versus seven? No, I think any of the one, six, and eight are faster horses early than Go Salvatore Go, which I don't think is a real problem. I thought the only reason to include Go Salvatore Go, besides the overall quality of the field, is the possibility the rail wasn't the place to be last time, and maybe that compromised Go Salvatore Go, but who shouldn't have been favored last time, frankly, over the winner. I agree with you, and uh, that's kind of the thing that I, I went to in terms of handicapping here. I also, I don't mind the cutback here. It, obviously, this horse showed some speed. This is just a tough race to really make a case for other horses as well. He used the nine starship menace first time for Randy Purcell. Y yeah, listen, Indy Artist is the horse to beat. I mean, Indy Artist's last race is supposed to beat this field, but you're talking about an 0 for 23. It's not as though every race has been a short price, but... He's been in an enough race, been a short price. I just couldn't take him on top. I couldn't take the five on top. And I, I, it's, these are the races you agonize over because you can't really make a solid case for anybody. And when in the R's, you keep coming back to him, I don't want to default to these horses. Starship Menace, obviously Randy Persaud is a very low percentage trainer. On the other hand, it is a trainer change. He didn't finish, I mean, he finished four lengths behind Indy Artist, finished behind him last time a couple lengths, but you know what? He's coming off a bit of a freshening against some horses been running quite frequently. His races aren't that slow from a buyer perspective that I couldn't take a shot with him. I don't love him. He's just my best alternative. Anything could happen. We even have <coughs> the one blogosphere from the rail who they could get aggressive with this horse and send him from the inside as well. I, again, it's tough to make cases, I think, especially on his off track as well. I'm, I'm going with horses that might be closer or on the lead as well. Yeah, I mean, your horses are the logical two horses. They're both on my pick five tickets. You wouldn't want to leave them off, but they're not exactly the kind of horse, and I know you would agree, that you're going to run to the window to bet. I wanted to find somebody I could lose $20 on. Okay, moving on to the fourth race, uh, open $16,000 claiming event going to the main track at five furlongs. Has have a couple of scratches. And I initially had the eight too clever by half as my top selection on the turf, and I actually land on her now being run on the main track. She's a, she's a pace of the race, I thought, definitely, e even on the turf. And last time out, I knew going into the race, she was decently bet. She was six to one in that race. 
I knew that it probably wouldn't work out well. Yes, yeah, she's run well going her out of ground on the turf in the past, but she is, in my opinion, a through and through five for a long turf sprinter. No, I, I agree with everything you said. And when the six and eight were the other, six and 10, I'm sorry, were the other potential speeds in the year, and they both came out, and even one of the sort of tertiary speeds, the three Bangla Dancer comes out, you've got nobody theoretically to be in challenging a horse in front that's also the only horse in the race that has any kind of dirt form to speak of. You go through the field, the only other horse I could make a case for and I want to have on my ticket is the one Aeolian who, um, the f you look at this horse, it's amazing. This horse's career debut was in 2012. It was so long ago, they still called Gulfstream Park West Calder. <laughs> um, and if you look at that race, she ran a 44 by her speed figure. And obviously I'm not gonna extol the virtues of a 44, but her subsequent race was a 24 off a two year layoff. <coughs> but it still took her a couple races to get it going on the turf. She probably is a turf horse that can't run in the dirt, but that first race was good enough that I thought looking at the field, she wasn't impossible to throw in as the alternative to the eight. Well, the thing, the point that you make as well is that there are a lot of horses in here, probably uh, enough horses in here that definitely run better on the turf and probably can't really run on the dirt. So she might be just be kind of the diamond in the rough behind the eight too clever by half. And that's kind of the approach I took with the five Wellington's appeal and sharp connections. George Navarro brings this horse out as a multiple winner on a main track as well. So I think this horse really figures the five Wellington's appeal. Yeah, it's funny looking at <coughs> looking at the dirt races. They were mostly buyer speed figures in the 50s and 60s, which look, they fit here, but I don't think they're anything. So you look at the 13 starts, three wins, and you start to think this horse is probably pretty good. Not that good, but could be competitive here. Definitely, and it's coming out a lot of the times too, even though a, a turf horse can't really run well on the main track, sometimes class speaks for itself. And this horse is coming out of some really nice races uh, and has been consi consi uh, consistent against those uh, tougher races as well. So sharp connections, I use her in the mix as well. We'll move on to the fifth race on the Carter Starter Optional Claiming Event. This race was originally carded for the turf, now on the main track at the one turn mile. And uh, again, this is, a <laughs> this is a very interesting race, especially with scratches pending. Well, thankfully they scratched the eight, the MTO. <laughs> spectacular flash out of this race. Um, That's a really... Yeah, you didn't <laughs> want to have her in there. Not that, not that she had to win the race. Um, <coughs> Mare on fire. I actually liked her over the 11, regardless of whether or not the 11 stayed in and here. Obviously her dirt races aren't that good, but you know what, they're not that bad relative to these. And I just thought she was kind of a logical horse in this race that would sit a decent stalking trip, probably outside of the six, big and toasty. Yeah, and you look at Big and Toasty, I kind of wanted to talk about this horse too. Should be the speed of the speed, at least if she can transition her turf form to the main track. And that could carry her a little bit of a ways, but the Nine Gorgeous Dream, I don't think will be too far off the pace. Now, first time out of Ralph Nick's barn, I think she could get a pretty decent position and she has experience on an off track and it was actually a decent performance. She was bet down to the favorite in that event against Maiden Special Weight Company. Now with some of the scratches that we're gonna figure and primarily turf horses, if she can revert back to her previous dirt form, she could be, she could definitely be legitimate in here. No, I know. That was her first, that was her debut. And it was a Ralph Nix horse that gets bet. And you're talking about September at Gulfstream and a Ralph Nix horse that didn't win. But listen, there are no superstars in this race. I've got her third and she's definitely a player in this race. The four of Fleet Mary is one who, do, who does have experience on and off track as well. And you go back to the Wasted Tears here at Gulfstream back in September. I threw this horse just primarily in the mix. Uh, she doesn't really have any off track form. You see a 32 by her speed figure on a fast track and a 58 when she ran against that company. But I will say it was kind of stakes quality type of horses and she very well could pick up the pieces. Yeah, it just seemed so much better than her other two dirt races that I wondered if the company sort of dragged her along a little bit. Faster pace, higher, higher fig as well. Well, with that said, races one through five, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're not gonna show a ticket for the pick six, but we will talk about it and perhaps talk about some strategies right after the break.
welcome back to Golfstream today, taking a look at the pick six sequence as a whole. We do actually have a carryover t today of over $6,000. And of course, uh, the pick six does start in the sixth race today with a love and race program. And we'll talk about the first leg of the sequence, obviously with scratches pending in the latter half of the card. We'll kind of regroup after uh, this, get some scratches, and then obviously show a ticket for uh, the prattle later on this afternoon. But race six does kick off our sequence, a maiden $35,000 event going the one turn mile on the main track and looking at this race I actually used uh, in initially four different horses in the first leg of the sequence you and I both land on the four our Commodore for Todd Fletcher we both landed on the overbet favorite for Todd yeah. Fletcher because when in doubt go to Todd you know you, you, you're gonna show a stat on a horse that's gonna be four to five in this race and you know I'm not sure this horse is gonna be that sort of price because I don't really know how much of an edge this horse has over Mountain Cry for Nick Zito but I guess the drop down for Fletcher this horse is gonna be a heavy favorite definitely a heavy favorite Todd Fletcher and this is just a interesting statistic and I think probably it's interesting because Despite all of the favorites, the winners we constantly see come out of Todd Fletcher's barn. He still has a positive ROI with this type of move. 180-day uh, layoffs made in special weight to maiden claimers in the past two years, 44%, and still a positive ROI. So interesting enough, he's a horse to beat, uh, and we both land on him. The four, the three mountain cry though is an interesting one. Now stretching back out to the w to the yeah, mile. Let me just say one thing about our Commodore. If you want to delve into the stats, and it's not when you start talking about eight, ten horse samples and, and lower, they're they're not even statistics. They're they're just sort of numbers. For what it's worth, with maiden special weight to maiden claimers on the dirt with 180 day plus laughs, but going just dirt and at Gulfstream Park, Todd is actually 0 for two. Um, he was second or third at six to five and tenth at five to one. So I, I thought it was interesting to point that out. It's probably going to win. He's got faster numbers than these. He ran against Wisecracker in Japan, two horses Japan, at the time. Yeah. They looked like they were going to be serious horses. Obviously, injuries and such have kept those horses from doing that much, though I think Japan did win a stake race, a sort of faux stake on the Belmont card, a three-horse field to kick off the day, actually. Mountain Cry just looks like the other horse. Where else are you supposed to go, Gabby? Well, you also, uh, one thing to definitely take note of, back in December when this horse debuted, he did run on an off track against restricted Florida breads. Uh, and uh, again, this is uh, something to maybe pay attention to because it was the worst race on this horse's form. Of course, he went on to run a good race in February at mm -hmm. Gulfstream, a good race at Keeneland, but maybe something to consider now with, uh, with our track conditions. Right. I mean, the best thing we can do is tell you reasons you don't want to bet on the four-hour Commodore because we picked the horse. We think he's a very likely winner in this race, but... He's the kind of horse going to be a short price, and Mountain Cry's not that much slower in the figs. Yeah, he's had better chances, but, you know, more chances. But he does, comes out of a race at Churchill that was probably reasonably difficult and ran well. I can't go past these two. It, it's very tough to go past these two, but the six high-quality prints, I love picking these horses, and sometimes they do actually show up. Now, this horse does have primarily uh, turf races in the past several starts, but you go back to his lone try on a sloppy sealed track, and it was actually a decent performance at 4-1 to one against Maiden Special Weight Company, and these are the horses that go overlooked because they have dropped in class on the turf, but essentially he's dropping in class for Maiden Special Weight Company on the main track. He has had his fair share of tries. But you asked for an alternative option, so I'm giving you one. You've referred to a 48 buyer figure as a <laughs> decent effort. It's actually the worst speed figure he's ever run. Well, <laughs> well. it could be the best today. <laughs> and, you know, some of those horses actually have showed up. Uh, there was a horse in yesterday's finale who... Uh, yeah, no, no, that was... But yeah. that was that was a legitimate one, one turf race. It was, was good well enough. Fed. Right. Yeah. Well, moving on, race seven. Six furlongs on the main track for this starter <laughs> optional claimer. Anything can happen on these cards. Uh, and uh, the two extravagant kid. Well, this, this is an interesting race altogether uh, on the main track because I you struggled. Ha you have a couple of horses who are coming from Woodbine Synthetic, a couple of horses who are coming from the turf, and, you know, you get Extravagant Kid, who was well bet last time out, first time on the main track. I go back to Extravagant Kid because I thought the blinkers on, main track, something, someone knew something because this horse was actually decently bet. Yeah, no, I listen, well, you know, the horse probably had 65 and 67 figs in the turf, and they were probably good enough to beat the field, and this is the kind of horse that I would have hated and I would have been dead wrong about. So, listen, but just she ran fine. It's still a 54 fig, and she's not exactly better than these, but I, 
I, I had a lot of trouble with this race. We'll take a look at Strike Up the Band's last dirt race, and this is at Keeneland in October when Strike Up the Band was easily able to handle a field when Al Stahl was still training him. He was claimed by Mike Maker, who tried his move first time on the turf. Wow, was this horse a crazy short price last time and did absolutely no running in that race with a bit of a m wide middle move, but didn't seem to handle the grass at all. He's going back to the right surface. He's got to handle a wet track. I took him on top, but thought this race was very tough, Gabby. Yeah, very tough indeed. And I believe uh, both of us actually have some interesting statistics. We have a lot of stati statistics on Mike Maker. And I believe we showed one for this particular horse. First off the claim, dirt to turf last time. It didn't uh, pan out, but this horse was heavily, heavily bet. Uh, Mike Maker, though, second time off the claim, going from turf to dirt. I have a negative stat actually here. Second time off the claim, going from turf surface to main track over the course of the past two years. Only two for 13, so 15% and a negative ROI, but I believe you're backing well, yourself up with a positive If one. you stretch it out to five years, it's nine for 27, so it was seven for 14. Those, There's your negative stat. It was seven for 14 in the pre previous three years. The question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to say, I'd rather look at the larger sample over five years, or do I think he used to win with this move and he doesn't win with it anymore? It's up to you to decide. And that's why I like to show both stats. Mm -hmm. I don't want to split hairs on stats regardless. I think this is the worst to beat in a race where an awful lot of them can win, Gabby. I know, it's very, very the, tough indeed. The three strong kids, strong composition, ran a big fig last time out and finishing second. Doesn't seem impossible. I've got the seven in the mix, flip shot, who's going back to the dirt, even though the dirt figs were slow. The second race was a pretty ambitious, ambitious spot for this horse. This is more realistic. This is just a wide open race. Wide open race indeed. We'll move on to the eighth race on the card, a first level allowance race and a, a mile and a 16th onto the main track. And we have the likes of the eight morning dancer coming out of a, an effort last time out, the three thundergram. I actually land on the three thundergram uh, first time out of the Brendan Walsh barn. Now, there's a couple of horses in here that figure to be close to the pace, but I do think that this horse is very, very fast. On paper, this horse is supposed to be loose to the lead, and it's going to make them top. I, to me, this was a two horse race. I, and my pick fives, are, I, I'm going to just play it as a two horse race. I don't get the bottom horse at all. And the only thing going for the bottom horse is it's got. Gulfstream and Todd Fletcher, and, and, and magic happens, but he ran this horse at Gulfstream Park West, and there was no magic. I, I don't see anything special about this horse, but I've been wrong about Todd again. He's got to deal with the three, but the thing about Securitas is Securitas isn't going to be particularly pace compromised because he's going to be sitting right behind the three. The excuse for Securitas last time, he was essentially, he was, he was eased. Um, I don't think it's necessary to be 58 and a quarter. I had him 58 and a half lengths actually back, but I don't want to split airs too much. I, he was chasing a wicked, wicked pace in that race that completely incinerated. And one of the reasons that Marking, who finished a very good second to run, happy in his subsequent start in, in the Malibu at Santa Anita, ran so well in there is that he was he was reasonably close to that pace as well, but it completely incinerated behind him. And Securitas was a victim of that pace. It's an interesting group of maidens in New York this year because the maidens going long in New York were strong. I mean, they were consistently running mid to high 80 buyer figures. Source lost to Jess's Dream, the Rachel Alexander uh, cult that made that huge run and ran second in there. It was a bad field and off the turf race when he won, but he consistently runs big figures that are faster, too, too fast for these, unless the three wires them. Yeah, we very well could see him be contentious. He does draw a, a pretty decent uh, post position there. The only reason why I kind of went against him was it was, yes, he was competitive against Jess's dream. Some pretty decent runners at Saratoga, uh, Belmont. You always have to really respect those maiden special weights that come up during the summer at Saratoga. However, his lone win was on an off track in a four-horse field, but he's getting those conditions once again today. So. His, his win, in some ways, is one of his worst efforts. It was a non-field, no doubt about it, but he's consistently running fast numbers. He doesn't have to win, but I, I just prefer him. The three uh, Thundergram does seem to be the worst to beat uh, and catch, but the eight Morning Dancer, I agree with you. He's very lightly raced for a five-year-old. He wasn't really bet last time out. Uh, there's a lot of question marks, but this is the type of horse that could really just bounce back off of his effort. Well, last time. he could bounce into being a different horse than he's ever been before. I feel like the horses that Todd's had for these contests, these connections overall have not been as strong as some of his other ones. We'll move on to the ninth race, a maiden special weight now run on the main track at the one turn mile and uh, scratches to be continued here the 14 it's all relevant though main track only entrant this horse seems to be the horse to beat obviously I, he last time out he was a uh, 
a decent second behind a horse who Chad Brown thinks very highly of. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shagoff, who beat him, is a horse that uh, we'll be seeing uh, at some point in the near future at this meet. And Shagoff is a horse that could very well stamp himself as a legitimate Kentucky Derby contender. And it's irrelevant, ran well in that race. He's run two big figures. He's entered in the last race on, on, on Saturday, but that's a very contentious race where he's not the favorite. I think they'll opt for this spot. And he figures to be a heavy favorite over the 12, Sir Dudley Diggs, whose dirt race wasn't that bad, Gabby. Really wasn't that bad, and I thought it was relatively quick. They went 22 and uh, 4 and 45 and 4 for the half. And again, this horse could very well get on the lead. And, and uh, if these horses don't really necessarily want to close from off the pace, he could have advantage there. Yeah, he is speed, but the 14's not slow. He's not going to be compromised. No, especially coming out of those races he, as well. He, he feels like close to a single. Whether or not we single him, we'll see as the scratches come in and we put our tickets together. Okay, we'll move on to the 10th race, an allowance optional claiming event, seven furlongs onto the main track. And it really does look like two horses that enter this race seem to be the only two, the five Cardio Cowboy and the eight Zulu. And uh, I, I actually had to opt for the five Cardio Cowboy, but to try to beat Zulu, but it's clear, clear enough, these are two very talented horses. They seem like good horses based on their races. And obviously Zulu has the benefit of a race over the track. And we'll take a look at his race over the track. This was opening day here. In fact, just the second race when Todd Pletcher reminded everybody that he's fairly tough here. He really looked beaten in here. And one of the reasons it's all relevant, probably opt for the race today is the horse who's outside of Zulu. He's in that race tomorrow, actually making it very, very tough. He was a person that was ready to roll. And Zulu did what a lot of Todd Pletcher horses do. They find more. This was a good effort. And you can see there was moisture in the track as well. So that shouldn't be a problem. He's well posted on the outside. He's way the horse to beat. But the horse that we picked isn't bad either. And you know what was interesting about that replay, too? Even before the quarter pole, uh, Johnny Velasquez was really getting after this horse and trying to keep him in in that spot in the rail in between, obviously, the rail and Sharp Azteca. But it did. It looked like he had to encourage him a lot. And I... I I kind of took it as a negative, but obviously it finished up yeah. in a fast time. He has experience on the main track, and he very well could be. He is. A he obviously is a talented horse, but I yeah. thought there was a lot to like about the five cardio cowboy. And this horse was decently bet in debut. He's been working here at Gulfstream in the past couple of weeks, so they've shipped him down here. Eddie Coletti actually with a winner on yesterday's card. This horse just looks like he's headed in the right direction, and I liked visually how he won the race. He did it with his ears pricked at the wire, and he just looked like it was relatively easy. And I think this horse that Mike Welsh has liked the way this horse has been working as well, which is always a feather in horse's cap. I mean, if you're not if you're not following Mike's uh, Mike's information on workouts, I think you're missing out down yes, here it's very because important. he does a sensational job of keeping people informed. It doesn't mean that you know there's a there's a winter tree where horses are falling off, but it, they're really worth paying mm -hmm. attention to, especially when he's looking at horses that aren't favored and horses that you might not be using just to use in your play. Because time and time again, he shows why you want to pay attention to him. The one prospectus to the inside of the other top. Pletcher horse in this race. You and I both kind of round out the mix with him, and he gets out of distance of the seven furlongs today, but last time out was caught behind a very fast horse in Cat Tree that just went gate to wire. Yeah, I mean, he's another example of a Pletcher horse that broke his mane with a slow fig and came back here, but I didn't think he ran that badly. I thought it was an improved <laughs> effort for him. He was never really in a great spot, though I have a feeling considering his last race, Todd might have wished that he drew towards the outside, because I don't think he was that comfortable being inside of horses. It's gonna, it, it was in debut, so at least he has a little bit more experience, uh, now today, but all, all the time when you get younger horses now going seven furlongs, a big field, you draw the rail on a sloppy track, there are a lot of negatives to be said about that. Yeah. We'll move on to the 11th and final race on today's card, a maiden $25,000 event. And now on the main track at a mile and a 16th. And uh, <laughs> I actually went with a kind of interesting horse, but the five, my music, she does seem to be the one that figures. She gets Lasix for the first time, and when she debuted, she debuted on the main track against Maiden Special Weight Company. Figuring in this race is a relative concept, right? I mean, I've gotten... It's all relative, I, I, isn't it? Right. Assuming no scratches, I have your horse in my play. I've got the four, five, seven, and eight as my four horses to close out the pick. Four, five, if we get there... I mean, there's no form to go on, but as you say, my music is dropping, getting Lasix. Temple Fur is another horse that's dropping a little bit, also getting Lasix. Uh, the thing about Temple Fur that's a little bit more encouraging is at least she showed speed yeah. in that race. And one thing you know, with Orlando Boca Chica, this horse is going, and she figures to be the speed in this race, depending on horses, if there are first-time starters in here that have speed. That's why I really liked her, actually. She showed speed, and uh, it was kind of slow early fractions, but she did show speed. She gets Lasix today. She Low track. She finds uh, a little bit easier company. Say what? Yeah, it was a slow track. Oh, it was I a mean, slow track. Yeah. Um, 
But the reason why I like the eight, little Gianna in here for Carlo Vacaresa, this, obviously this filly has never tried the main track before, but she's by Super Saver. She's out of a mare who's a four-time winner going long on the dirt. The blinkers do go on. Her last race was actually quite decent, and if she can transition that form at all to the main track, I really like her in here. Okay. Yeah, I'm, listen, yeah. I, you know, you're grasping at straws in here, and I can see that. It is a little odd that Carlo didn't run this horse on the, on the, uh, uh, on the dirt to begin with, mm -hmm. but maybe the opportunity just arose to r run on the turf before the dirt races. And... Uh, other than that, not a whole lot to say. The four Sylvester Yoli is a horse you threw in as well. Yeah, I mean, just a horse that, that's coming out of a race where it got a uh, 31 buyer figure, which is hard to ignore in a race like this. It's not like you're looking at much form. You know, once again, we'll see how the scratches play out when the races come off the turf and look for things. And these are also days, Gabby, where you want to be alert and be looking mm -hmm. at the board because there are going to be overlays frequently in off the turf races. And you might find a horse that you we've talked about or you've looked at that's supposed to be about four to one or seven to two in a race and for whatever reason is eight to one and you can be very forgiving in wet tracks as opposed to finding reasons not to play long shots find reasons to, to play, play them, them and throw them in and these are the kind of horses that finish second or third with logical horses and they make tries they make exactas they make supers and I think these are the days that if you really want to pay attention you will be rewarded more than any other day at the racetrack because the races will be misbet. I agree with you. We see it all the time, especially even uh, several cards that have been taken off the turf so far at this meet. We see a lot of, you know, good horses who have run well on the turf, who have not run at all on the main track, be heavily bet. So you have to kind of read in between the lines and, like you said, find reasons to like those long shots and find reasons to not like those short-priced horses. Yeah, right. And when some horse who's supposed to be the favorite on the turf and he's not really supposed to be favored on, on, on the dirt, it ends up six to five, and it wins and it beats you. Don't get discouraged. Y you stick to it. Mm -hmm. There are enough opportunities over time. Play, pl play smart in these races. Pay attention, and you'll make money. I I'm a big fan of off-the-turf. I mean, obviously, we wish we had great weather and everything was perfect, but the reality is, from a betting perspective, I'm a fan of off-the-turf days. There's a lot of value to be had in these type of racing cards, so best of luck. It is challenging, but again, if you're on the right side of it, it's very, very valuable indeed. 11 races on tap. Once again, that pick six starts in today's sixth race on the card. We do have a carryover of just over $6,000. We're going to take a quick break. Larry Colmus will be up next with all those scratches and changes and we'll be back for race one best of luck on today's 11 race program